prefer the myotibate surgery lectures, which would be more dramatic than the others, because today I'm going to be talking about the role of normal bundle. Um, so that's very dramatic. But also, as duality, which is very homotopic theoretic. And this is an essential, these are essential even to translate the geometric input of the day surgery into algebra. So geometric surgery into algebra. So it's a bit vague, but you have some real mathematical, oh, well, not mathematical, don't worry, real topological problems involving manifold spaces with concrete duality, and you want to pass that into this machine, and the machine has chain complexes, concrete duality, and things which chain bundles. <laughs> so let's not go when I start to think about this thing. Let me start much earlier, even than I started, this, um, the something called Alexander duality. subspace K in Rn, there is a map. And the map looks like this. And it's defined like this. And this map has a very good property which induces this H I K which are isomorphisms for reasonable spaces. Um, so I won't go into details how such a map induces things, except that if you think about it, you've got a class in CRN minus K, so just by using the fact that this by the Allen Silver theorem got a map to SN minus 1, you've got a N minus 1 cohomology class. You have to be rather careful about which type of cohomology to use, but if you, let's, we'll assume, uh, assuming K is a, say, a simplicial or CW subcomplex. These maps are isomorphisms for i not equal to 0 and not equal to n minus 1. Explicit duality like that. And so that's the first example of a space whose cohomology is the homology of the space, or you want whose homology but equally well if we could reverse the roles of K. So I should have said it's a finite double complex. Obviously, 
this symmetric kind of thing. So the, question, the very nice thing here is if I can use the linear structure of Rn to define this explicit map of the scale. The proof is not entirely trivial of why it's an isomorphism. I mean, it's, in fact, it's still for arbitrary k, but then it's a funny check homology. I mean, it's not entirely clean, so to speak. It's not, I mean, one of the big things that was Czech homology was invented to prove the Alexander theorem, I think, to some extent. Uh, and it's rather peculiar, it's not a singular homology. But in the case, when k is a finite simplicial complex uh, or subcomplex, it's very standard, ordinary, singular. Um, in fact, if cells, which are not K, so to speak, to model, to have and then it's this Alexander duality actually follows from a superficial level, um, argument from chain equivalence, chain has more business, um, I'll do a second slightly off message. But in my book, algebraic everything goes to manifolds. It's a modern account, but it goes back to Massey in the 50s. Now, um, the only, so this is a kind of beginning of S duality, and it's not yet clear what well, this has to do with surgery theory, but it's good general knowledge, and it will in the moment have something to do with surgery theory. So, um, the next question is supposing that, ah, yes. And then there's a nice term which goes to Wyken, JHC Wyken. Every finite is a closed regular neighborhood. dimension zero. It can be smooth or PL. In fact, it's a simple monthly equivalent. I mentioned this already. A simple monthly equivalent. like this. Hmm. What we have here is the closure. So these are no longer disjoint, but nevertheless infinitous. And this space is homotopy equivalent so this space itself, but also the union, therefore, to our n minus k. So it's so nicely local because of the nice local conditions. So this gives a slightly different way of looking at things. Um, and if I can also embed our n in S n by compact time infinity for the same kind of idea. slightly better because, so not apparent from the way I've looked at it, it's more suited for the fundamental group. Uh, so in a later I would talk about, um, well, this space, not very well written. So this would 
has something to do. So another uh, and good interpretation of Alexander duality. Does that say, what, what does it say, Rn is W, W, U? In your point at Trinity. No, no, on the right hand side. Closure. Hmm? This? No, above, that? above. So you say closure and then there's a bar. Yes, I don't, need, I don't need the bar. I'll put the closure. The bar is unnecessary, so now it doesn't say the bar. Okay, so um, this Alexander duality is closely related to Poincaré duality. So a manifold, the boundary, has... So Alexander duality for... So there's an n minus 1 here and an n here. And the point being that, um, using the same terminology here, this is of course true for any oriented n dimensional manifold with smart boundary, but particularly this one is framed at the learn oriented, so it's not a problem. Um, and this also, there's no, the one advantage of this point of view is that you don't need to exclude the cases 0 and minus 1 or 0 and n, it's still just always. And so if true for any oriented n dimensional but for our regular neighborhood Identify this with the reduced of mode, so we put the little kind of um, can identify. Just like be careful. Not the same. I can use. Cooperation of oh, this is a center. This is much better. This is that. And so now we can see that this is not an equivalent as before to Sn minus k, which has the same homology as Rn minus k for say for h star iso to for star not equal to zero. I mean the only difference between this and that is that point of infinity. So let's not worry too much about this difference, and now we see that there's something nice, that the, this complement is not equivalent to this that complement, and now we can say that there's an exact sequence and now you see where that difference between the n minus one dimensional Alexander duality comes uh, and the n dimensional Poincaré duality. Because this is homotopy uh, isomorphic uh, to that. 
So apart from the fact that something happens uh, at zero and n, this is zero. So here we have our, our Alexander duality, or well, here are Alexander duality. And this close connection between Alexander duality and Pontelectius duality has been established. This I seem to be kind of staying very far from surgery theory, but now to come back. Now, and now I want to understand why do I need all this for surgery theory. And the reason is that if I take a symmetric complex, I know, I'm sorry, geometric Poincaré complex, I know how to construct a symmetric Poincaré complex. And I want to understand how to construct it as much as possible from the so-called Stuart norm foundation. So maybe I should just go one little bit further. And I had this here. So before I do that, let's move. One little bit. So I have this Alexander duality for any space okay, That's That's other important. And so for surgery theory it deals with Poincaré duality spaces and manifolds. It turns out that to really understand uh, how to translate bundle information into chain complex information, you really have to deal with spaces such as arbitrary finite subcomplexes. So um, just say one, six. For any finite complex, K, just convenient to have both things, just both Rn and Sn available. Um, the spaces Okay, so this is the reduced cohomology of that, and of course we have this isomorphism here uh, from over there. Um, if replacing this is an idea of Spanier and Whitehead in the 50s, this depends on an embedding of this abstract or ab arbitrary finite complex in the Euclidean space, 
what happens if you do all this, this has duality if you uh, increase and, and take a bigger embedding? Well, then you get a space, let's see, then W, let's call this um, easiest way to say this. Is that you change the regular neighborhood by mapping it with W1 plus C. So that's easy. That's because the normal bundle here is, well, the trivial bundle. But this, is, this is the trivial normal bundle over Rn. Uh, in, uh, in so if you look at these closed neighborhood neighborhoods, you just get W1. Now what happens to this? Well, you get exactly which is the pointed suspension of this pointed knot. So that's the connection between uh, duality and s duality. So what since this we started off, so I started off with a subcomplex of R n. But here I'm starting off with just a finite complex and using an embedding of Rn and seeing so you get one kind of S dual, this one essentially the same as that one. I mean, well, you can say quite right, but the I mean, precise connection is that I should have perhaps basically with a few modifications the connection between these two points of view is that the, the, the regular neighborhood approach you get is the suspension of Sn minus k maybe. It's not a big deal, just check, get it right. So, um, the effect of increasing the embedding is to replace the, the dual by the suspension. So, um, S dual of finite CW complex K, a well defined stable homotopy type. So that's really all that I want, will want. So stability means you say that two maps, or two, well, two spaces are stable homotopy equivalent if after suspending, where well, this is a suspension operation, if x is stable more than y, we can only if sigma k different than px is more than y for some. So that's stable homotopy theory. That's, that's this well-known spanning white duality. And actually one of the motivations for stable homotopy theory was that the dual of a Finite complex is really only well defined in stable homotopy theory. It's not a homotopy theoretic object because we have really this choice here. Okay. Now, let's go back to our concrete duality space and try to understand how much what it has to do with. Actual duality. So before I do the chain complex version, let me do the stable homotopy version. We can use that. So there's a gorgeous theorem about 1961 here, subsequently generalized manifolds. I'll just take the manifold case. If M is a compact with 
So that always exists by white heads, uh, by quicknate embedding chains, and no bundling. Join the base point is S dual. To the Tom space. So in fact, I remind you what Tom space is. You know what the Tom space is. Okay. Yes, it's a white point quantification. Just as this in fact is a white point quantification. Okay, um, so what do I mean by SQL? Well, with basically, it's the saying that, as in general, you have to get the um, well, let me just finish behind this. Um, if you take a regular neighborhood of a manifold in our end, say, this is exactly the normal bundle. This is its boundary is that. So this is just our old friend that that's the map which we had before, and that's so it's not very different, it's not equivalent to what was going on before, except that in the manifold case, in modularity for point regularity spaces, the regular, the regular neighborhood is a, well, has this nice property that the homotopy fiber is that. So it's, it's, that's the sphere. The sphere. So K should have been an N. Okay. So the only problem so far is that I haven't actually defined it formally what the S dual is. And here's we're going back. S duals of K. Or possibly K plus. So pattern dimension should start to so you want to have this explicit Alexander duality thing, but this is the one I'm going to use now. So for any space K, you place it by a regular neighborhood, so we're going to W, for dimension zero sub manifold Euclidean space, you take this thing, and that's a space whose cohomology is the homology of the space it was total. But in our case, that is exactly the Tom space. Another way of this should be a disk. Um, so this is E for the entire Euclidean actual vector bundle. This is just the unit disk. This is the unit sphere bundle. So the S dual. So let's just go through this. And now the connection is not so much between Alexander duality and Poincaré duality, but Poincaré duality and the Thomas morphism.
there's a nice, relatively complicated, well, it's not that complicated diagram, it's just a lot of maps. So this is one pair duality for M. This is the Thomas morphism. This is, well, basically comes from the fact that these are the same spaces. If you're slightly careful, you have to have reduced homology for one thing. Um, and this is reduced homology of W plus. So this is because M sub W. This is quantum left at duality. between the ordinary Poincaré duality of M, in fact, this could be used to prove Poincaré duality. You have a space, which is an embedded Euclidean space, has a neighborhood which has, doesn't actually have to be a vector bound, but there's a spheric fabrication, which is multiplied by x and minus, and minus one, then it has Poincaré duality. Of course, that's true for any vector bound, spheric fabrication, this is just standard, and this is Poincaré duality. This is always true. This does not require M to be manifold. Okay, so that's the kind of connection. It's still a bit unobvious how this translates into chain complex states. So now we'll finally switch to chain complexes and ask a question to which this, with this kind of general theory will provide the answer. To what extent does the symmetric Poincaré complex of a manifold, but more generally Poincaré duality space, depend on the normal relation. And the reason why that's important is that some I need to, whenever I'm trying to decide whether homology classes can be killed and how many ways can be killed, you need to have a really good understanding of the normal bundle of embedding. And for that you really need to know the normal bundle of the manifold which you really need to know on the chain level what well, I'm about to tell you now. So, then, Same M as before, but now I'm going from the topology of the potential topology to the chain level. In delta, is the thing which I believe I defined this last time. Well, um, the Alexander Whitney. So um, W is the standard free So, and CM is really a tensor CM. I'll take the CM to be some kind of a cellular chain complex as time to generate a tree, and then you don't have to worry so much as just said. Okay, so let me just explain what these things are. Again. What 
we've got here, well, the usual business. Lecture one. Diagonal terms of this, so pi m, maybe the other way around. Um, let's see how this works. It's supposed to have that to add to a minus r, that's the case. Right, so it's two minus r. So that's something relatively familiar. So if you only have this method or this way of passing from manifolds to chain complexes with symmetric quantum duality, um, with the chain equivalence, of course, only gives you the spin of squares into the top dimension, but then it gives them very well directly from the pi. So it's kind of grounded in some kind of reality. Now, now we want to understand to what extent I'll tell you what the answer is, but only after some preparation. Preparation involves this. Uh, involves these groups up there. So I'm only interested in the homology groups. So 
this has nothing to do with Jake Chen from Sermani's books, but it will be used in an element in here is exactly one of these things. A kind of example is now with money folks. So, well, I'm going to define suspension now. What I'll do is take one of these and suspend. By which I mean that. So I have to tell you what SC is. The suspension of a chain complex is the same chain complex with a dimension shift of one. So that doesn't seem tremendously, it seems kind of a bit of a fraud. But it's a bit like the suspension on the space and that that's up to chain equivalence. So you can somehow see that these are kind of if I take a point in space and look at the suspension. And if you look at the chain complex, that's chain equivalent to the, this algebraic suspension of R to the chain complex. So that's the easy this kind of motivation. The same differentials, of course. And this, one can work out what's going on here. I should say I am using this convention. So, for example, you can see this is not an isomorphism. Because j phi 0 is 0. And this is like uh, that's the analog in this world of cup products vanish in suspensions. Like that kind of suspension. And in fact, if you took that symmetric construction, this J, but I should have called it just called it S. J is, will come in a moment. There's a single suspension. J is lots of suspensions, one of the diagonal. Okay, so the diagonal chain approximation of a suspension is a suspension of the diagonal chain approximation. And that's a kind of more systematic way of saying that the cap products vanish in suspension, and also that the steno squares are stable. Going back here. here, I still get the same steel square, because you add up the same one. Now, that's all very standard knowledge in the 50s, a bit forgotten now maybe. So, I'm going to claim that if I take a manifold, M, and look at a symmetric structure like that, then, well, not so much the suspension, but the limit of suspensions depends only on the chain bundle, on the vector bundle. So, let's have a much more theorem. And then I'll explain in what precise way. This will be our translation from 
from the world of sandals to the world of chain complexes. space in the next high dimension one, and then another one, and then another one, and all the way what I'll call Q of MC. Oh. Um, so that So that the precise dependence of that symmetric Poincaré structure, and this is what we could also do for the universal cover, is that you take this J and you get this class. Now, and this class depends only on the Tom space. I have to tell you now, given any vector bundle of spherical fibration in fact, how to get an element in here is that extension. That's not entirely straightforward. To kind of now we, so how does one do this? Well, it uses exactly the S duality, which I introduced at the beginning of this lecture. So given Is familiar. There are lots of books on vector bundles, and no books on spherical fibrations. Occasionally, some books on vector bundles. So that's a homotopy-specific construct that's kind of much more geometric. Well, let's just stick with vector bundles. But X is not a manifold. Mu is not a normal bundle of a manifold. It's just any vector bundle. So this is going to be how to let. using this technology already. Construction, the symmetric construction, which I used way up in level 8, doesn't apply to homology classes, it applies to homology classes. So, embed and large. So, this is supposed to be a finite complex, superficial CW. And so, you don't care how large n is, and that's the whole reason for going to this direct limit. In the application, k or m plus k would be n. But k would be large or n would be large. It's like unfortunate that I used k both here and there, but it's okay. Um, and that t with 
S U O. So I'm not I'm not requiring this to be manifold. That's exactly why I started at the very beginning saying that this Alexander duality, you can do all kinds of things. As soon as you've got an embedding of something in a sense, you can look. or this business with a dimension shift. But it's every finite complex, including the Tom space, has an S dual. And this S dual I'll call T now. I'm working with reduced homology, and that's going to be a good thing. So just with the Tom space, and doesn't have any topology, Directly, I mean, any French topology it doesn't matter. It's a nice finite subcomplex. Okay. And this space comes with all kinds of special deals. Um, comes with a map, or if you prefer, but that doesn't work quite so well. Now we've got a space, the S dual, the Tom space, whose homology reduced is the reduced cohomology of the Tom space itself. And now comes the, the distant fact that this Alexander Whitney uh, construction. That's the Alexander Whitney Steenel construction on the S dual of the Tom space. So I'm not using a Tia theorem just yet. I'll come back to it later. I'm just saying that there is a symmetric class, but it's stable. So that's the symmetric construction I talked about in lecture one. That's the Tom class. And this thing here this Tom isomorphism is actually a chain, chain equivalent. This is chain equivalent to that. By the type of plus. So if I take n to be large, a miracle happens. You start off with a cohomology class, and you end up with something in here. But it's, I should have had n minus, what is this one? So I'm now going to claim the second part of the theorem that, so this, I should say, gives our uh, full classes um, the best place to look for the detailed description is chapter 9 of algebraic theory of surgery. This is my nightly LMS paper which is on my website. So it, the point about this construction is it only depends on the initial vector bundle, and no duality other than S duality. And I can finish that theorem.
precisely, so that now we're going to change the number. And then continue to repeat this. Well, so presumably this, this last equality is because n is so big that it's steady. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, it's, yes, everything is finite, so it's like everything becomes stable. Yes. So we've got H, N, N. So now mu will be the normal bundle of some embedding. So we have a nice group diagram. This So it's going to be nice, I'm going to fit quickly, I'm afraid. The basic idea is that this atia S duality between the manifold and the Tom space means that the symmetric construction on M at the stabilization by J is entirely determined by the normal bundle. And so what you get here is the fundamental class. Here you get the Tom class. Here you get the S dual of the Tom class, which is basically the fundamental class. And here you get, well, the diagonal approxi chain approximation, not for M, but for T in star. So that's where you need the existence of the S dual, even though you know it's for a manifold, or a normal bundle manifold, it's M. Okay, so let's see how to stop at this point. Was that the whole is the beginning. So I, if I call this symmetric construction sigma star n, and this what I can call high quadratic construction sigma star. So this is the generalization, generalized formula of Boo and Tom. So string of squares on the left become boo classes of mu m on the right. So I haven't even told you about boo classes. But I did have a hint over here that you can use, you can define the boo classes, which is the here. This is a good way. It's actually quite difficult to define boo classes in general. This is a very good way of just using the duality. So this goes back to Tom, and who was I think he was student. At any rate, so this is, I'm going to stop here.